live again. I go always. Welcome to another live lesson on the BBR YouTube channel. We're going to talk about something fun today. And why is it fun for all you authors, screenwriters, anybody that likes to create stories, be it visually or through literature. Today we're going to really explore Act 2. Uh, we're going to talk about nine beats that you should potentially hit to make a strong, valuable Act two, and also the three major beats that you, the three major areas or sections that you should really be focusing on to absolutely make a powerfully impactful Act two. As always, I'm Thomas J. Beleza. Please like, comment, and share this video along with subscribing for future content on how to be successful in your career, specifically the entertainment industry. Let's get right to it, shall we? Now, these are the three acts. Uh, there are three acts in any given story, act one, act two, act three. Today, we're going to break down act two, OK? So nine beats to hit in act two. Now, the reason we say nine beats is there are three sections to each act, act one, act two, act three. OK, there's three sections in all of them. Act two's three main sections, OK, are just we're trying to establish the crisis of the new world. Ultimately, it's the ascending conflict to midpoint. We want to hit that second section, which is the hero explores the new world, which is also known as the midpoint. And then ultimately, when we get to the third section, it's finding a solution uh, or also known as the sending conflict or fall from conflict. These three sections are broken up into three beats each. And when you're writing a story out, either in a script or a novel or a short story, or visually, if you're just trying to make art say something, in a comic book, whatever the case may be, you're trying to hit these nine beats all together, but it's really good and satisfying when you focus uh, on each section. Because when you take some time to yourself and you say, let's explore this first section of Act Two, Crisis of a New World, we're ascending to the conflict, it allows you to give some focus to it. One of the major parts for writers uh, uh, that becomes an issue is really, their their second uh, their second act or their midpoint kind of uh, it, it it flounders on like is this exciting or is this not exciting it kind of dies a little bit hey welcome back hola cómo está um, so one of the biggest things is having a powerful midpoint or act two because a lot of times the first the first intro to a story is really exciting and uh, what's really fun is you look at a new you know, act one and you're like, oh, here's the new world, here's some new ideas, here's new characters. This is the easy part. Let's explore what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. But when act two comes, we really have to disrupt that ordinary world, the world they're familiar with, which only gets 25% of the story. So it flies by quick. The concept of the second act is really 50%, if not more, of your story. So the bulk of your energy shouldn't just go to act one or act three like let's have a great ending we should be able to focus on each section as if it's its own entity with with all the power we can and that's why we break it into three sections and we try to hit three beats which in each section so let's go over crisis of a new world okay that's the first section of act two the three beats are new world fun and games old world contrast now remember in act one it ends with them being thrust into the new world. So we want to understand in a new world, what change and how is your protagonist dealing with or feeling uh, uh, the value uh, being pushed into the new world? What, what is it that has changed from the old world to the new world? And what is there? It could be internal, it could be external, it could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be aggressive. But Katniss enters the Hunger Games. That's the new world she's being thrown into. So she's coming from her world, which is the town. She's used to it. She has a friends and family. They live in poverty. Uh, she volunteers for uh, the reaping, which ultimately is the Hunger Games. She has to prove herself. She gets a score of 11. Everyone's like, who is this person? And they're like, you're going into the Hunger Games. And there she is. She's thrust into the Hunger Games. So we have to understand what is it she's dealing with? What is the stresses, the, the happinesses? What is it that's going on? Why is this world different? And that's what you're exploring in that first beat, okay? Um, 
and and to uh, to to my audience, uh, they're asking me to tell a joke. I am not going to tell a joke. I am uh, I'm giving a lesson on the. Uh, however, you can use this formula to write jokes. I just want you to know because in a joke you need to set up uh, the uh, basically the premise, and while you're reaching the premise, the new world would ultimately be uh, the first punchline, and then each of these beats could be uh, um, callbacks or or uh, tags. Right? Sometimes people throw in a three tags called the, the rule of three. So, in the new world, after uh, Katniss enters the Hunger Games, now we get to explore the second beat in the first section, which is fun and games. Ultimately, the protagonists can have fun, they take a break, they can relax a little bit. In this situation, Katniss travels around the arena uh, looking for water. For us as an audience, what we're going to see is like, what is the arena? What's the deal with it? <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> They're saying I'm so many things at once. You, sh you should see me at the dinner table. I'm basically, I, I look like uh, the nutty professor. It's just me, and I sit at every seat. I get up, talk to myself, and I move around the table. I, I barely ever get to the food before it gets cold. Uh, so the fun and games, think of, think of it as like the moment you get to explore your character. You get to explore who they are, what they do, what is, what a little bit, like how are they reacting to this new world? Uh, for, you know, Katniss traveling around the arena isn't so much of her reflection of her, her mental, her mental reflection on it. It's she, she's showing us through her experience of, all right, I'm getting a break. Nothing is, nothing bad is happening, though, though bad things could happen in a fun way. We're finding out their strengths. Maybe this could be like, uh, you know, them working out, uh, the, the montage, something like that, right? The third beat in the first section of act two is old world contrast. This is usually where we compare the new world to the old world, the, the new world to where they came from. And in this situation, in the Hunger Games story, Peta teams up with enemies and reflects on his relationships. He feels uh, betrayed because Katniss doesn't necessarily like him like him or she's not really given. You know, there's a lot going on in that story with their relationship, and he's like, damn, that world. <laughs> Yeah, you, you left out napper. I'm a huge napper. You know, let me put this on the screen because this is funny. Uh, I'm a, I, that is right. I'm a comedian, singer, song. I do all, but I'm also a napper. I love napping. I'm taking a sleep. Yeah, no Pepsi today. I'm trying to give my uh, my throat a little rest with the soda. So that's your that's your crisis of the new world. We're establishing Act Two, the ascending conflict, and we're trying to hit these three beats. We're trying to say what has changed. Right of what has changed in this new world? How is it different? Obviously, the the actual Hunger Games is in an arena, so we need to see that new world. Uh, you know, things like that. The second beat, or the second not the second beat, the second section is known as Hero Explores New World. This is also the midpoint. This is ultimately we're leading to the main conflict, and it, it has three parts, three beats that you're trying to hit: old world, um, build up, midpoint, section reversal. Okay. Your build-up is ultimately the build-up to the midpoint. This is when things start really boiling up. It hasn't, it hasn't overflowed yet, but the water is... Blah, 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 blah. It's getting there, right? So for Katniss, she is pushed towards career tributes. If you've ever seen the movie or read the book, I apologize for the spoiler, but ultimately the arena starts getting a little put. They're like, hey, there's a storm, and she's like, ah, and she has to run, and she's being pushed towards the career tributes, which are basically like the bullies in the movie, right? The antagonists, okay? This, uh, the next beat after that, which will also be, what? The fifth beat? Midpoint. This is the main conflict. Uh, this is the main point. She, she meets the tributes, the career tributes. There's a fight. There's a battle. She almost dies. But, hey, look what happens. Uh, she escapes after Pita. Pita. Saves her. That's really great, right? Now, but there's a big battle. There's, there's a fight. There's, like, what's going on, right? And she's like, I can't. These, they're, they overpowered me. Uh, I don't know what to do. There's nothing I can do. Oh, thank God Peter saved me, right? Then we have basically the direct reaction to that, which is the section reversal. It's the reaction or consequence of the midpoint. So this happens, right? She has a fight. Peter saves her. She's like, this is a lot. I'm a little overwhelmed. So what do I do? Well, she She forms an alliance with Rue. Oh, hey, Rue. How's it going, Rue? Okay, and then she formulates a plan to basically take on the career tributes. This is basically in the story where they go, we can't do anything. 
But if I if I'm gonna if I am gonna do something, what can I do? How can I make a move on this? All right. And that is your hero explores a new world. We're basically building up to the midpoint, right? It's the there's nothing I could do but go to the midpoint. There's the midpoint craziness, and then there's like what is the reaction or the consequence? There's a couple of things here. The reaction is she has to form an alliance with Rue, and they have to take on the Korea tributes. They have to, because it's, it's a, a fight to the death. The, the Hunger Games is a fight to the death. Your third section, and hey, we're doing good with time. The third section is finding a solution or the descending conflict or fall from conflict. This is because of the midpoint. It's do or die. It's do or die. What are they going to do? We have to come up with something. We have to find a solution. We have to figure out how we are going to deal with what's going on. All right? And then these three beats are the reaction. Okay? What are the long-term impacts of the midpoint? The midpoint happened, and just what are we going to do? How are we going to take it on? And in the Hunger Games, basically what they do is um, they realize they have to take down uh, the Korea tributes, and they're going to do it by stopping their food. All right, if they could stop the food supply, they have a chance because they need food to survive, right? So they're like, we have to just put all our cards in. This is this is something we could do. It's a plan. We now have something. Instead of just going, I'm by myself. I'm being pushed by uh, uh, the the fake storm. I have to attack them. I fight the Korea tributes. They're too much for me uh, on my own. Thank God, Peter saved me. All right, now I have Peter, and I have Rue, and we have a plan. So now it's not just her against them. There's a team, okay? And that's the reaction, which brings us to the eighth beat, which is the action. Because there is a plan, right? Uh, the, the hero or the protagonist is going to decide to take action, even though it's a major task. Now, we've proven that they're, they're a formative in this in this story, right? The the uh, career tributes are formative. They took her out like she was nothing. She was like, oh, I can't. Handle. Plus, she had the pressure of the storm. It's like, well, what do I do? But now she has a team. But it's Rue. Rue's like the little girl in the story. And Peter, it's Peter. And uh, you know, what do you got? Arrows. And she's like, we 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 can do this. This we can make something happen. We could try this. But it's, this is a task. And that's what the action has to do. And this is where uh, Katniss, ultimately, she blows up the food supply, but Rue is attacked. Poor little Rue. Rue gets hurt. Okay? <clears throat> Which brings us to the ninth beat of Act 2, this Section 3. The dedication. Despite setbacks, Hero will survive. So no matter what is going on, they're like, I'm going to make this happen. I have to do it. And once Rue dies, spoiler alert, once Rue dies, uh, Katniss promises Rue she'll win for her. Okay? So in the beginning of the story, if you remember Act 1, if you go back to the last video I did uh, last Wednesday, uh, where I broke down Act 1, ultimately, uh, um, Katniss makes the, the she, she, her call to action after the inciting incident is she steps down and she goes, you know what? Uh, I got to do this. I got to survive because I want to get back to my family. So she decides to take action, which is her chance of saying, I'm going to win the Hunger Games. So she goes in bold, right? So the so now she gets pushed into the new world, right? The crisis is a new world. Think of it this way. She's going up, right? Let's If, if it's like this, right? Let's say we're going up. In After Act 1, like at the end of Act 1, she's like, I'm going to win this because I want to get back to my family. And she's like, I'm good at the arrow. I can, I'm a good archer. I got this. I got a score of 11. People love me. This is nothing. But she discovers she's in the Hunger Games. She sees everybody. They, they come up and they run towards what she has to get. Uh, during that, it's the fun and games. She's like, oh, man, this is all right. So let me get my bearings. All right, this is the arena. Let's get some water. All right, what are my tools? What do I got? What am I? What can I do? All right, and she's, she's just going up. The, she's just ascending, ascending to the conflict. Right, and then she gets to the part where she's like, uh, "Where is it?" Boop, 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 boop. Right, and then we find out that Peter, who potentially could have been a teammate to her, for us as an audience, we see that he betrays that trust because of the, you know, she doesn't really find him like that attractive. 
He's like, you know what? I'm joining the enemies. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But ultimately, as we're going up it, and that leads us to the beginning of the uh, of the tip of the mountain, which is Katniss is like, I I don't know what to do. I'm just going to, maybe I'll let, I'll see what happens. And then the game makers are like, no. I think the president actually does it. But, but it's the game makers that are like, no. And they create that storm. And now the pressure's on. So she's close to the top. Right? So if we had, if we had this, this mountain. Right? The storm starts here. Okay? So uh, if this is act one, and act three. So act one, right? Right here is basically where she's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight. I'm going to do it and win and get home. And she's just going up this hill doing all those things. Oh, let's look at the arena. I got my stuff. Here it is. I got my water. Oh, Peter. Peter turns on me? That's good. That bastard. Why would he turn on me? Right? And then we get to basically this, right? This whole part, the hero explores the new world, is that buildup is Katniss. This is where the storm starts. And when you're writing your story, right, you have to think of that, right? What, what is going to basically, what, what is the midpoint? And how do I lead myself there? How do I lead the story there, the characters there? And in Hunger Games, that's what's happening. The storm happens. She's like, whoa, I thought this was going to be a little easier than I thought it was. But the, the arena could be manipulated? The game makers can manipulate it? That puts a little bit of pressure or buildup. And she gets to the top. And when she gets to the top, she's like, all right, I'm taking on these career tributes, right? Which is the midpoint. And they're like, no, you're not. There's too many of them. They're too, they're too organized. It's just her. But luckily, luckily, Peter, oh, Peter, saves her, okay? And that leads to the descending. Well, not the descending yet, but that leads down to the reversal. And she's like, oh, my God, this was crazy. I don't know how I'm going to beat them. Peter's Peter. She finds Rue, and she forms the alliance. So now... The official descending happens. And while they're descending, you have the reaction, the action, and the dedication. The dedication is ultimately Rue dies right here. Rue dies. And Katniss is like, no, I got to survive. So what I was getting at is in the beginning, she's like, I'm going to survive to get back to my family. But she makes friends and there's like turn and she goes, wait a minute. This is harder than I thought. And she's re- She's revigorated. She's she's given more motivation, and the motivation is because Rue dies. Right? Oh my, he's dying. Because Rue dies, Katniss is like, I got this. I'm doing this for you. And well, by the way, in, in the second and third book, that's a big thing, right? And then that propels her into the third story. So there you go. That is uh, Act Two. And I break Act 2 down into nine beats and three sections. So when you're writing a story, focus on each section and then focus on the three beats to each section. And that'll help you organize a good, solid story. So the crisis in the new world, ascending conflict, focus on what it is the world is and how they're going to be working through it. And by the way, a, 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 good, a good rule of thumb is there is hope in the ascending rise. Because remember, like I said, she's like, oh, this is nothing. I'm, I'm going to, I have to survive to get back home to my family. I'm really good at being an archer. I got a score of 11. Everybody loves me. There's hope. There's hope. That's why it's ascending. It's a rise, right? It's rising to the conflict. But once that storm happens, there's more tension and more stuff going on in the story, which leads it to the midpoint where it's like, wait a minute, I'm over my head. So there should be hope or a sense of hope or... <clears throat> sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there should be a sense of hope and not so much like everything is dread. If it, everything is dread on the rising or the ascending uh, uh, conflict or the rising conflict, the, the story, you, you're going to lose the audience. It's going to be like, these people need a chance. And that's why in the rise, there's a fun in games. There's a moment where the characters themselves get to go, eh, let, me, let me take a breather. I get to relax a little bit. And the audience gets to enjoy the characters in the new world, being their old world self in the new world and seeing how they react to it, right? So keep that in mind. The, the Explorer's new world, this, the second section with the three new beats, which is ultimately the top of the mountain, okay? Build up midpoint section reversal. This part, you can really be punching at your protagonists, okay? 
everything could go bad. They could get sick. Uh, they could get into a fight. They could mentally not be uh, able to do it. Their anxiety kicks off. Whatever. It doesn't doesn't also have to be a fight with an actual character. It could be. This is the major internal struggle, or everything they've been working towards is getting a massive pushback. Think of it like that. Okay. Uh, and then once we get to finding a solution, you have to give them a sense of possibility, like like it's plausible they could be victorious, but at the same time, you also want them to feel like uh, uh, there <laughs> there is uh, uh, you know a challenge, a challenge. You know, tell them that there's a challenge ahead. All right. So when your readers are reading the third section of Act Two, these last three beats, right? The reaction, the action, the dedication. It's that it can't be completely hopeful, but it has to have that sense of like, even though it's a because I if you if you see here uh, here it is. So the action uh, they decide to take action. Your protagonist decides to take action, even though it's a major task. You have to look at it like. They know this is, because in the beginning, remember, she was like, yeah, this is going to be easy, right? Act two, this is going to be easy. In this leading down to the beginning of act three, the protagonist is going, this is not going to be easy. But this time, I'm choosing to go through hell to, to, to find resolution to this. I'm choosing, despite the craziness that's going on, that I have to win. Right? It's a sen it could be positive, it could be hopeful, it could be optimistic. But they know, they know it's not going to be easy. It's, an, it's a major task. It's uphill. Okay? And that's every, everything about descending to here should have that sense to it. That I may be over my head, but I am going to make this happen. If you've ever seen Die Hard, Die Hard kind of does that, right? I, you know, where they're just like, they blow, he blows up the building, <laughs> just throws the thing down the, the thing. And he's like, the FBI are here. The cops are here. They're not doing anything. They don't know what's going on. I have to take, right? right? The action. The, the, he goes, uh, decides to take action. He's like, I got to do something. So they, you know, in Die Hard, he chooses. He's like, I'm going to take these guys out. I have to. I have to do something. Because... The cops and the FBI are idiots. And that's really like if you look at it that way, you know, like he's like, I have no shoes on, I gotta cut foot, but I gotta take action. So anyway, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Obviously, I'm I'm gonna be ending the video in, in two seconds because I know I try to only do 20 minutes of, of a lesson, Monday through Friday. Uh, but I come back to questions, especially if you're watching this video now. Remember to like, comment, and share this video along with subscribing for future content on how to be successful in your career and also learn the craft of writing, music, comedy, so on and so on. More importantly, we like to share this video because knowledge is power. And the reason I do these videos and, and why I try to help people is because we can only work together, grow together, and rise together if we help elevate our mind and the people around us. It's all about working together and making the best of the people that we surround ourselves with. I am Thomas J. Beleza. Have a great day. And uh, real quick, if you're watching this video right now, I will not be here tomorrow or Friday, so Thursday and Friday or Monday. Uh, I got some stuff I got to take, take care of, but my regular schedule will start again on Tuesday. I do these videos Monday through Friday, usually at 4.30. I may change that to 5, but right now the schedule is 4.30, Monday through Friday. With that said, hasta luego, vida zane. Work, grow, and rise together. Be good, everybody. Always a pleasure.